All right. Thank you for watching this virtual lecture event hosted by the Institute of World Politics. For those of you who are new, IWP is a graduate school of national security, intelligence, and international affairs. We have five master's degree programs, 18 certificates of study, a doctoral program, and two new online Master of Arts programs. If you're interested in learning more about us, please visit iwp.edu. This lecture is a part of the 14th Annual Kosciuszko Chair Conference. This conference is sponsored by the Kosciuszko Chair of Polish Studies and the Center for Intermarium Studies. We'll be hearing from Mr. Gregory Kuarczyk. Mr. Kowarczyk is a professor at the Institute of History, Polish Academy of Sciences at the Gorzhov Academy of Jacob of Paradise and the Center for Totalitarian Studies at the Pilecki Institute. His main research fields include history of Germany, particularly Prussia in the 19th and 20th century, history of anti-Catholicism and the history of Polish political thought. Professor Kowarczyk, welcome and thank you for joining us. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Professor Marek Hodakiewicz for inviting me to have a lecture at the conference organized by the Kościuszko Chair at the Institute of World Politics in Washington, DC. Uh, the subject of this lecture is the strategic defense against communism in teaching and works of the blessed Cardinal Stefan Wyszyński, primate of Poland. Let me begin uh, with a quotation from the, his pastoral letter from April 1949, addressed to the clergy of the Warsaw Archdiocese. I quote, we have entered into an open fight against Satan who shows his ungodly might in almost every aspect of ordinary life. Today, we segregatia peccatoribus, separated from sinners, more and more precisely see that there exists a community of sinners in the world united in sin by solid bonds, which are being increased since the original sin. These are Fili Satana, Satan's children, family of Satan, which draws revenue from sin and from hatred towards sons of God." End of quotation. These words correspond to diagnosis formulated by Reverend Stefan Wyszyński before the Second World War. In 1938, he published a book under very telling title, Intelligentsia at the Forefront of Communism. The future primate of Poland, who at that time was very much versed in Catholic social teaching and held PhD degree in this discipline, put forward the following definition of a revolution. I quote, revolution is never an unexpected phenomenon. It is never unpredictable, sudden. Its approaching can be recognized by certain signs which occur beforehand. A revolution is organized barbarity, which is not easy to descend into unless a long lasting destructive work accomplishes earlier an inner evolution downwards. This process can be stopped only when destructive forces are confronted with the power of whole society's sound spirit. End of quotation. This definition, bearing in mind the title of the book, specifically applied to communist revolution. Let us have a look at keywords present in this description. Organized barbarity, a long lasting destructive work, an inner evolution downwards, and how societies sound spirit. In another part of this book, Reverend Wyszyński remarked that, quote, modern communist currents don't have their only source in social economic sphere, but also in moral religious area. Therefore, Reverend Wyszyński continued, the real aim of Bolshevism is a worldwide civilizational upheaval, 
destruction of Christian culture. And he added, Bolshevism is to be perceived not only as social, but also as a certain religious, sectarian, atheistic, antichrist current. End of quotation. Let's pay close attention to these last words, antichrist current, not only anti-Christian, but antichrist current. Communism, therefore, poses in the first place a spiritual threat, not economic or social one, to the Western civilization. The fight against communism takes place in spiritual domain. It is to be fought on the spiritual and moral ground. At that time, such perception of communism was very clearly articulated in the magisterial teaching of the Catholic Church. In 1937, in encyclical Divini Redemptoris on the Ungodly Communism, Pope Pius XI said, I quote, an arduous fight against onslaught of evil caused by sin is a sad consequence of Adam's miserable fall. This ancient and very insidious seducer is never tired of deceiving people. Therefore, across the ages, upheavals have been occurring one after another. To the present one, that means communism. The latter either rages almost everywhere or poses a serious threat. Its destructive power and scope seems to be above everything that the church had suffered during earlier persecutions. It is happening to such degree that nations face a terrible danger of falling anew into barbarity even more dreadful than that which reigned in the major part of the world before coming of the Savior, end of quotation. In Divini Redemptoris, Pius XI pointed to the astonishingly high ability of communist propaganda to deceive many people, particularly among intellectual elites, in the non-communist world and persuade them to collaborate with international communist movement with its headquarters in Moscow. This deception, while making use of such slogans as, for example, fight for the world peace, found a very effective backing in the existence of, as the Pope called it, conspiracy of silence about communist crimes and extreme poverty in the Soviet Union, the conspiracy which reigned in substantial parts of the Western press. It is to be stressed that already in 1934, Reverend Wyszyński, in his book, The Culture of Bolshevism and Polish Intelligentsia, noticed that the communist propaganda found a new target of its endeavors. It didn't aim at the workers anymore, but at intellectual elites in the Western world. I quote, the starting point of this new method is a very encouraging statement that intelligentsia is very much used to be at the forefront of upheavals and revolutions. To exert a cultural influence on intelligentsia is probably the most dangerous method of conquering the world. While conquering the minds that lead the world thanks to their literature works, Bolshevism slowly, gradually, unnoticed shapes minds of the rest of citizens. A state lulled by non existence of communist rioting may not notice in time that it governs over citizens who already have collectivized soul, which secretly had been prepared to accept a new system." End of quotation. Desire for novelty and spiritual passivity were, according to Wyszynski, the main factors leading to infatuation with communism of many Western intellectuals. 
In 1934, he spoke of Salam communism, practiced by many representatives of Western intellectual elites, of, as he said, strange people returning from Russia, talking with admiration about what had been shown to them, end of quotation. Reverend Wyszyński cherished no illusions about communism whatsoever. In his books published before the Second World War, he repeatedly pointed to the fact that the Soviet system, admired by so many strange people, is nothing but, as he said, a planned system of exploitation by the state of human forces, of workers deprived of any defense, even of trade unions, which are an instrument in the hands of the Bolshevik party and the Bolshevik state. He clearly saw that Stalin five, five years plan of intensive industrialization was aimed at creating militaristic state. The Soviet literature, according to him, presented a brochure-like works used to enhance industrial production. But why such an evil and dysfunctional system does still exist. Reverend Wyszyński explained that the only reason why the Bolshevik system had no, hadn't collapsed yet was that it lived off the heritage of Christian culture. Living off meant wasting it at high speed. As the future primate of Poland remarked, the longer communist system existed, this devastating speed more and more accelerated. The moment when the Soviets are able to create a new kind of man, entirely deprived of Christian virtuous influence, it will be, Wyszynski predicted, the beginning of the end of the communist system. Moral downfall will automatically lead to the economic collapse. In his book, Intelligentsia at the Forefront of Communism, Stefan Wyszynski remarked that, quote, people who are most susceptible to communism are people deprived of religious and moral principles. Consequently, the surest way of avoiding infatuation with communist ideology, wrote in 1938, future primate of Poland, is a thorough revision of one's conscience, leading to shoring up internal, internal order in man's soul, order in personal, social, economical, professional, and civil life. It is, as he said, the most important thing in the program of fighting communism. In view of these diagnoses, decision of Pope, of Pope Pius XII to nominate in 1948 Stefan Wyszynski, then Bishop of Lublin, to office of Primate of Poland as Archbishop of Gniezno and Warsaw, is to be seen as putting the right man in the right place at the right time. And the time was marked then by the total onslaught of the communist regime on the Polish nation, its culture and faith in order to make the Poles a new so-called socialist, but in fact Soviet style communist nation. As we saw from the pastoral letter of the new primate quoted before, he was fully aware of the nature of battle which was to be fought against communism as the battle against evil empire or empire of evil. So President Ronald Reagan was not, was not the first man to put forward such diagnosis. The great pastoral program of Cardinal Wyszynski, which began in 1956 by making at the Yasna Gura Shrine solemn national vows then during Great Novena between 1957 and 1966, with culmination in 1966 during millennial celebrations of Poland's baptism, are to be seen as a strategic defense 
against communism and as a marking the right route while passing across the Red Sea. In 1957, Cardinal Byszynski at Jasna Góra said to the Polish clergy that, I quote, Marxism is a doctrine which hangs by its legs from stars and is not to be seriously reckoned with. It is too narrow, too unhuman, too unworthy of human mind. Therefore, it doesn't pose a serious threat. But something else is really dangerous, and that is undermining of morality. We may face an oncoming confrontation against Christian morality, and it does already happen. Moral laxity seen in the corruption of morals is one of the proofs. End of quotation. So the most urgent task of the church in Poland was to preserve moral integrity of the Poles. The Polish Catholics were to be persuaded that the strength of the church depends on the spiritual power of the faithful living in the sanctifying grace, wrote the Cardinal in 1956. The national votes at Jasna Góra Directly, directly referred to the votes of King John Casimirus made 300 years earlier during the Swedish invasion of Poland. In 1956, more than one million people gathered at the walls of Jasna Góra shrine made the votes according to the text prepared by Cardinal Wyszyński. The Polish nation pledged to keep faith in God to be faithful to his moral commandments, which meant fighting national vices, such as, such as drunkenness, to preserve integrity of Christian marriage and family, to save life of the unborn children. In 1956, the communist-dominated parliament in Poland passed the bill, which legalized abortion from so-called social premises. More than one million people gathered at Jasna Góra on the 26th of August, 1956, is the picture from the category of no comments, the picture that marked the real watershed, which was then taking place in Poland, which was under communist regime. Not coming back to power of an old communist, Władysław Gomułka, but this scene, from Jasna Góra meant a real change. It was demonstration that the Poles don't want to participate in organized barbarity of the communist revolution. During the Poznan anti-communist uprising in June 1956, one of the main postulates, uh, which was uh, then put forward by the workers in Poznan, was to liberate Cardinal Wyszyński. The defense against communism was about moral integrity, and the latter comprises virtue of valor, of courage. In one of his private notices written pro memoria, Cardinal Wyszyński in 1957 remarked that, quote, the most crushing defeat of the Catholics is fear of communism, end of quotation. Blessed Cardinal Byszynski had no such fear, although he was anxious to avoid an open confrontation with the communist regime as long as it was possible. The country was devastated by the war and by German and Soviet occupations. Polish elites were decimated. 30% of the Catholic clergy was murdered by the German occupation forces in the Polish territories incorporated after September 39 into the German Reich. Primate Wyszyński was also aware of what is happening to the Catholic Church in other countries in the Central Europe dominated by the Soviets. That's why he decided to sign in 1950 an agreement with the communist government. 
But when the regime in 1953 tried to gain a decisive influence on nominations to the church offices, the response from the cardinal was firm, non possumus, we cannot accept. These words led him, led in September 1953, to his imprisonment, which lasted three years. During that time, he composed the text of the National Votes and completed agenda of the Great Novena. At the end of October 1956, Cardinal Beszynski returned to Warsaw as unbroken head of the Catholic Church in Poland. The church, which was an oasis of freedom governed by the primate who possessed an undisputable authority. The years of the Great Novena and the millennial celebrations were the crucial years in the history of Poland under the communist regime, because, as we know now, it was middle of the passage across the Red Sea. The new generation of the Poles was coming of age, generation that didn't experience living in independent state, as for example, the generation of Cardinal Wyszyński or of Cardinal Wojtyła. The same generation was under constant pressure coming from different institutions of communist state that served the aims of indoctrination, for example, schools. That now was the time to build a new socialist Poland according to socialist morality. At stake was the internal, internal legitimization of the regime. Just at that time, there came the national votes, Great Novena, and Millennium of Poland's Baptism, which put together, set a clear non possumus to this program of creating new socialist Poland. Between 1957 and 1966, Cardinal Beszynski repeatedly, re repeatedly confirmed the existence of the Polish nation as a baptized nation, which was not the same as a sum of baptized Poles. They die, but the baptized nation, meant as cultural community, remains. The communist propaganda, which was spread also in his school textbooks, tried to inculcate a view that history of Poland began on the 22nd of July, 1944, when the manifesto of the so-called Polish National Liberation Committee, established in fact by Stalin in Moscow, was published, and that all the good things in Polish history came from the East. Cardinal Wyszyński, during the years of Great Novena, and millennial celebrations of Poland's baptism repeated that Poles can equally be called, as he said, a Roman nation, because the baptism of the Polish prince Mieszko I in 966 rooted Polish history into the Latin civilization. And we as the nation belong to the West. No wonder that the regime viewed this great pastoral program of Cardinal Wyszyński as direct danger to regime's most vital interests. In 1964, Central Committee of the Communist Party in Poland officially stated in its internal discussions that the main aim of the Great Novena is, quote, to deepen clericalism and bigotry and to counteract against celebrations of the 20th anniversary of the communist Poland by not mentioning social and economical achievements of changes that are taking place in Poland since the end of the Second World War. End of quotation. According to the leaders of the communist party, the real aim of pastoral program of Cardinal Wyszyński was, quote, to, to raise discontent within the Catholic segment of society 
by argumentation that it was due to the present social condition and due to the lowering of living standards during the last 20 years, that such national vices as drunkenness and laziness have increased, end of quotation. Communist Prime Minister Joseph Tsirankiewicz called the Great Novena a hoax. Tsirankiewicz promised that we will respond with our own hoax. And he kept this promise. In 1966, the communist secret police arrested the copy of the holy icon of Black Madonna from Yasna Gura, which as a part of the millennial celebrations was touring across all Polish dioceses and transported it back to the Yasna Gura shrine with official ban of further pilgrimage. There came another picture from No Comment series when thousands of people gathered and prayed around empty frames. Cardinal Wyszynski saw devil's claws in such response of the communist regime. But in fact, it was a sign of desperation. The communists were aware that they were losing strategic struggle for the souls and minds of new generation of Poles who were born after the Second World War. In 1966, this generation with other millions of people counted themselves against communists during celebrations of millennium of Poland's baptism. Another no comment picture comes to mind with crowds of people gathered around Primate Wyszynski in 1966 in ver various places of millennial celebrations in Poland. It was this generation that in 1980 organized a great solidarity movement. St. John Paul II said that had it not been for heroic faith of Cardinal Wyszynski, there would have been no Polish Pope. But it, it could equally be said that there would have been no solidarity movement without generation of 66, which had been incorporated into tradition of Polish baptized nation by Cardinal Wyszynski. Cardinal Wyszynski died on the 28th of May of 1981. It was the time of the so-called Solidarity Carnival, 16 months of its existence before martial law imposed by General Jaruzelski on the 13th of December, 1981. During last months of his life, Cardinal Wyszynski reiterated his earlier diagnosis that without a right order of conscience, there would be no victory of the communism. It was not only about individual conscience. In January 1981, he stressed the importance of national conscience, meant as fulfillment of moral commandment to defend sovereignty of homeland. In this respect, Primate Wyszynski pointed to necessity of safeguarding cultural independence of Poland. It meant duty to, I quote, think in Polish categories and by Polish brains. In other words, as he said in 1981, one should avoid looking into the right and into the left, should consolidate our own cultural forces and not to disperse them, and lastly, one should resist temptation of new Targowica coming from any direction." End of quotation. Targowica in Polish history is the symbol of treason, the symbol of naivety of those who, at the end of the 18th century, believed that the foreign power, in this case Russia, will guarantee Polish liberties. But Targowica is also indicator of chaos, of intellectual blindness of people who lost the true sense of such words as freedom and patriotism. On 
the local ground, many people joined the Targovica Confederation who earlier fought against Russians during the Bar Confederacy. I think in our times, when we face the increasing Kulturkampf, keeping national conscience in right order is of vital importance, not only for the Poles. One could ask, what would Cardinal Deshinsky say if he lived in our times, marked by the neo-Marxist revolution? It should be noted that this new type of revolution would be no surprise for him. In 1967, in one of his homilies, he said that there were two kinds of communism, official one and unofficial. The first declares primacy of matter, the latter primacy of spirit. The unofficial sort of communism aims not at changing aims not at changing means of production, but is determined to change human being as such. This unofficial communism finds its expression in the youth revolution. End of quotation. The primate was speaking about the generation of 68. In his pastoral letter for the land of 1970, he mentioned the revolution of 68, warning the clergy and the faithful that, quote, not all that is happening in other countries should be followed by us. We must be vigilant not to succumb to currents full of anarchy, destruction, and falsehood. We should protect our youth and nation from this disorder. If the wealthy nations who don't know what to do with their time and with their money go for anarchy, that's their case. But we cannot afford it. With all our forces, we must cling to the rock which we see in the church that is our strength, power, and endurance. End of quotation. In 1961, Cardinal Wyszyński said to the Polish youth, quote, you should have strong faith, but it must not be a blind faith because you have a reasonable soul, end of quotation. So how to defend ourselves against this unofficial kind of communism, which after successful march through institution of the Western world by the generation of 68, is rather to be viewed as an official one. The answer is back to civilization of faith and reason. Civilization that built magnificent cathedrals, and invented an institution of university. The civilization that teaches that human spirit on two wings of faith and reason is approaching contemplation of truth. Thank you very much for your attention.